All right, you lot, how's it going? So, in one of the last videos, I was playing around with that old Oxford welder, and I had all these welding rods. I think they were 70s, 16s. And I was playing around, and I decided that they probably weren't any good, because I know for a fact that they'd been laying around in the moisture when this place was flooded, not to mention winter and summer, just laying in the box. The box itself had been very wet. I know it had been wet, and it was all crumbling apart. Uh, well, I decided that these weren't really any good, but they were still looking all right, and they did work. They just didn't weld particularly well. And I thought to myself, let's do a little bit of an experiment. Now, I must stress, I've got to stress, this is just for fun. This is just an experiment for fun. You know, this isn't serious. I'm not trying seriously to try to get these rods to work well because if I wanted to do some proper welding where I needed it to be good, I'll just go and buy some new rods. This is just for fun because you're supposed to, well, you can use them without baking them, but you're supposed to bake your rods. In fact, it might even say on this packet, uh, re-dry moist electrodes bake it says on here bake for two hours at 300 to, to 300 300 to 350 degrees celsius that is 95 to 150 amps these will work at so I remember when I used to do this for a job we had this big, it was like a safe, big grey square oven in the corner of the workshop. The welder section was over there and that's where I used to be. Big grey square oven, no window in it obviously. The door and the walls were like that thick. It had three shelves in it, a dial at the top and a red light with a switch on it at the very top there. And that used to be on 24-7, it never turned off. I dare say these days, Companies turn them off of an evening of a night and that to save electric because it's a bloody fortune the electric these days. Um, but that's what we used to do. So any of you lot who are welders now, even if you you know if you've got any knowledge, please I encourage you, I encourage you to put a comment and say whatever you want to say, whether it be constructive or just criticism in general, because everything is I'm always open to listening and reading comments and if you've got any useful information you put it in comments other people can learn as well. So what we used to do was we used to put the rods in the oven and just leave them in there. I know the packet says for bake for two hours but we used to just leave them in there. The two hours is probably a minimum, I don't know. So I thought let's do a little bit of an experiment shall we? I found this old a Prolex mini oven. It's obviously designed for cooking food, um, not not for cooking bits of metal. But I thought to myself, let's do a little bit of an experiment. I can't fit all the rods in, look, the rest of them are there. It's not really long enough to fit the rods in, they have to kind of go sideways. But I've managed to fit some in, and it says it goes to 230 degrees, which isn't really enough. But I think it'll be better than nothing. So. I've been baking them in there now. They've been in there at 230 degrees for about two and a half hours, so a bit longer. At least it says it's supposed to be 230 degrees. I was standing here and I thought to myself, I'm going to get the temperature gun and I'm going to measure what it says because the dial says 230, but is it actually 230? We'll be surprised at what it actually is because the hottest part that I could find it was right at the back I can't find it now, it's gone down it's either gone down or I can't find it oh there it is it was 130 degrees now that's obviously very shy because it won't focus Bloody hell, look at the size of that spider. Hold on, big spider going across the floor. Anyway, there was a massive spider about that big 
crawling across the floor then. I'm surprised you didn't hear it creaking as it walked. Anyway, so the hottest I could find is 130 degrees. Most of it seems to be about 119. The rods themselves, I'm taking the temperature through the glass. Whether the glass will mess up the reading, I don't know. Um, but I can't open up the door because if I open up the door, the rods fall out because I've had to stuff them in. Anyway, so according to this temperature gun, we're baking these rods about 120-ish, 130-ish degrees Celsius, which is better than room temperature, which is about 25 degrees at the moment. So let's do a little experiment. Let's do a little bit of welding. So these rods have been in there baking at 120 something. I can tell you what, the, the, even through my gauntlets, they're going through, you know, I can feel the heat even through the gauntlets. So, let's see. Zoom me all the way out so that you can see as much as possible. It's definitely hot. It's definitely a lot hotter. I'm not going to do any grinding. I'm not going to do anything. Let's see if these are going to be any better on a bit of dirty, rusty bit. They should be able to go through that. So now that I've chipped the slag off and given it a bit of a wire brush, we can see that they didn't actually produce that bad of a weld, considering. Now I know on the packet it says these be 95 to 100, and, what was it, 130? 95 to 150 amps, that these will do. I've got the welder set to 110, which is the maximum this welder can do. Um, but don't forget, the longer the wire, the longer the cable, the more the amps you use lose. So we're probably not on 110 at the end of the st uh, the end of the rod. It's probably more 90 or something like that. It's not an awfully long cable, but it's quite thin. Anyway, it wasn't able to maintain an arc for the whole duration. It kept going on and off, which is why we've got a weld. It's not quite uniform, but it done the job. So it's definitely not worth throwing those away. There's some of the other ones that kept stopping in the middle and then it fizzled out. I don't think it's a problem with the welder. I think it's the fact that those rods need more amps to perform properly. And although it's set to 110, we're not actually getting 110 because it's just not not capable of it. Don't forget, it's only a little tiny domestic welder. Those rods are more suited to a, a commercial or an industrial welder plant, whatever you want to call it, that can deliver more amps. Trust me, that's definitely the problem. But by all means, more than welcome to put in the comments what you think. But it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, they work perfectly well. So I think what I'm going to do, because I know all of those rods were subject to moisture, I'm going to bake all of them, as many as I can fit in there at a time, to dry them out. And then I'm going to keep them in a well, a very dry place, so they don't get wet again. And then I'll be able to use them. Because although they don't do a very like a perfectly good job they do still work well on a side note my old screen for my helmet decided it weren't going to work anymore 
and I mentioned that in one of my other videos and one of my long-term channel subscribers slash channel members decided to have a look on the internet I haven't had a chance I've been busier than Satan himself at the moment but he sent me a link on Instagram and he said this is what you're after I think and he managed to find he managed to find on Amazon of all places this actual welding helmet that I bought from a welding shop more than 10 years ago I didn't buy it from Amazon I didn't buy it from eBay I don't think I didn't really go on all that really back then but he managed to find them selling this whole thing for 33 pounds and I thought to myself, should I just get a whole new screen, a whole new helmet? Then I thought, no, that's incredibly wasteful. There's nothing wrong with my one. But they were selling the uh, individual filters a bit cheaper than the screen itself, a bit cheaper than the whole helmet. And I thought, let's just get a new filter. So I did. And I thought to myself, I must be able to mend the one that's in it because this new one's got a little tray that slides out and there's a battery in there. I looked around the old filter, there's no tray that slides out with batteries. So I simply pried it apart and inside there's two very, very common CR2032 3 volt batteries, lithium ones. They've got to be lithium because don't forget it's solar powered and it needs to recharge I don't know if I can fix this because when I took it apart I did pull on them wires a little bit I might be able to put them back on I don't think they broke but these batteries are soldered in that's a that's a soldered joint on there or whatever you want to call it I don't know, it might be a press I don't know what it is but you can't pry it off so I'm going to try and apply some heat not too much just with a soldering iron to these and if I can get these batteries out I might be able to put some new batteries in this and then I'll have a spare filter or I might be able to mend this one this is my other screen it was a good screen um, served me very well over the years but it's also decided to stop working so if I can mend this one I could put it in here or I might be able to take this one apart and just mend this one that's the original one for this one. But you can mend them as long as you can get those batteries out. But it doesn't matter. I've got a new filter for that one now. So there we go. It would appear that if you wanted to and you've just got a domestic oven, you can bake your rods at less than 300 odd degrees and it will make an improvement if you think that your rods got wet, if you think they've got damp. You can bake them in your normal oven, your normal food oven at the highest temperature and it will make a bit of a difference because these rods definitely didn't weld anything like that when I first tested them out. In fact they were, well I, I tried to cover them up, I tried to weld over them but there's so much um, paint and rust and dirt, you get, I've got a lot of porosity. Porosity is when you get dirt and air and just bad things in your weld but they, they weren't that good before I baked them. Anyway, this was just a fun, little fun experiment just to waste a bit of time. Don't take it too seriously. If you liked it, great, stick around. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you on the next one. Love life, treat people nice, never be nasty to anyone because that's just not nice. And I'll see you later on, all the best.